Hi, this tutorial is for students in 7th grade life science and I wanted to give you a general overview of DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. And deoxyribonucleic acid, uh, DNA, has three things and the deoxyribo refers to a sugar that each little part of uh, DNA is made of. Nucleic tells you where you can find DNA and that's in the nucleus of a cell and acid has to do with a little bit of chemistry of it and the hydrogen atoms that are on it. So over here is a three-dimensional uh, image of three of DNA and here's a two-dimensional image of DNA and we'll get into that a little bit more in just a moment. So the first thing to know about DNA is that it's made of these things called nucleotides and one nucleotide is right here. There's another one right here, another one there, another one there, another one there, and there's two sides. So the nucleotide has three parts. The first part is right here. This is the phosphate. This is the sugar or the deoxyribose. And then this part right here is the nitrogen base. And there's four nitrogen bases. There's thymine, adenine, guanine and cytosine, or sometimes you'll hear them as A, C, G, and T. We use the first letter. So these match up on opposite sides, and you'll notice that every little nucleotide here, it has the same, phosph uh, has the same phosphorus, it has the same deoxyribose, but what's different is the nitrogen base. And the nitrogen bases have an order that they pair up. So thymine always matches with adenine, or adenine always matches with thymine, and cytosine always matches with guanine. To understand this a little better, you have to also understand how this fits into the big picture. So what we have here is a chromosome, and chromosome is really nothing more than a way to package DNA. All these little squiggles, that is DNA and chromosomes appear during a certain time in the cell. They're not always visible, but the DNA is always there. The term gene and allele apply to chromosomes, but they also apply to DNA. So when we talk about a gene, we're usually talking about the location on a chromosome, and in that location is the DNA that would have the directions for making a protein. When we use the word allele, we're talking about which version of that gene there is. And if there's, we'll talk about simple Mendelian traits. If there's one gene that controls a trait, there's going to be the gene on one side of the chromosome and one on the other. And one might be dominant, one might be recessive, and we're talking about the dominant or recessive version, we use the word allele. Now as far as the different shapes, this is where a lot of people get confused. DNA itself is in every nucleus in your cells. It's right here. Unwound DNA and right in there you can see the nucleotides inside there's the nitrogen bases, adenine is matching up with thymine, cytosine is matching up with guanine and so on. There's about six feet of DNA in every one of your nuclei in all of your cells and it isn't always in the same shape. So DNA gets packaged and where people get confused is they don't understand that the, the name of the package changes. So DNA itself gets wrapped around these little proteins and what these are called are, these are basically called histones and it wraps up the DNA and then they can get wrapped around larger proteins and, and this little shape is called a nucleosome once they get wrapped up and eventually it turns into something called chromatin. And the chromatin right here you can see is just wound up DNA, it's wound up around these little proteins. And that's generally how it's hanging out. Uh, when your cell's just growing, when it's going through the cell cycle and it's in interphase and growing, it's hanging out like this. However, when it turns into a chromosome, that gets wound up even more. So it ends up getting wound up around bigger proteins and wound up bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually you have chromosomes like this and this is how they would appear during metaphase which is part of mitosis and part of the overall cell cycle. And this just allows the DNA to be more uh, packaged in a more organized fashion so that when this splits 
and one copy goes one way, and one copy goes the other way for mitosis and cell division, you get one copy of DNA into each new cell. Now just to follow up on that, there's all these different terms for how it gets packaged, but to give you a quick rundown of what the DNA actually does when it's back in the cell, and this is, this is when it's just going under interphase, it's growing, and the cell's making proteins for itself. So you have this DNA inside the nucleus, and here you can see that G matches up with C, and to represent this DNA, we just have letters on each side representing the nitrogen bases. So when this gets read, the DNA stays in the nucleus, and when it gets read, that's called transcription. And I guess you could also think of it as being copied. This splits apart, so this strand goes up here, this strand goes down here, and it will read this and match it up with the other side. It makes a one-sided copy, which is called RNA. And if you look at the RNA, it's very similar. It, it read this side and made a copy on the other side, everything that matched up to it. And the one difference is right here, there's a letter U, where there would have been a T, but otherwise there's a G, a G, a C, an A, there's a U again, and that's because in RNA there is no thymine. There's another nitrogen base called uracil, which replaces it. So this will be exactly the same as the top, except every T is replaced by a U. And in that piece of RNA, that's called mRNA, or messenger RNA, it ends up leaving the nucleus and going out to the ribosome where the ribosome can read it or translate it and build it into a protein. So every three nitrogen bases have the code for one amino acid. And the ribosome puts those amino acids together and eventually builds a protein. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about DNA and the different packages it can come in. Uh, remember where it's found is right in the nucleus of a cell and ultimately it has the instructions for your cell to make proteins.